On this episode, we are trying scary things. And you gotta be strong about this. Christian is not afraid. I'm scared. But you gotta trust the process. Just, just let me cook for now. Mmm. Hi everybody, this is Christian from LazyDevs Academy. This is the Advanced Schmuck Tutorial. Um, we are currently working on our system. We are working on a system of collision detection. This is already working pretty pretty swell, I have to say. It's working fine. I'm, I'm good with the way this is working. Um, but the way we set up our system, it's not easy for us to edit the collision, uh, collision boxes, the collision detection boxes, the... Yeah, the collision boxes, right? It's just not as easy to edit them right now. So the next step that we're approaching today is going to be about expanding our editor, our sprite editor, um, to, be a, for, to be able for us to do the collision boxes, right? In the editor, giving us tools to edit the collision boxes. All right, so let's let's load SPR dit. Uh, load sprite dit. Um, right, so here's our sprite editor, and so for example here in, in this one, this collision detection box, the sprite number 28, that's actually not a sprite, that's a collision box. Um, and we want to now enter, like, give us some tools to be able to say to our sprite editor, hey, this is not a sprite. This is supposed to be a collision box. So what I want you to draw on the screen is actually not the sprite, uh, that, that thing that you see here, this little bundle of pixels, I want you to draw a different sprite. And then draw the data that you have here, draw that, uh, superimpose a box on top of that. I want to add like a collision detection mode. And the question is how are we going to do that? See, the problem is that we're having here is that we could add that mode very easily, but where are we going to save this information, right? If we're going to set this up that, okay, let's draw the player's ship in the background here. We could add like a menu item, okay, draw this sprite here and that's okay. But then what? Because when we export this and reload this, that information is going to be gone, right? It's going to be still be displaying as this little Minecraft block. <laughs> so actually what we actually have to do now, and you've got to be strong about this, we're gonna actually have to add metadata. That's right, metadata. So what is metadata? Um, I think it can be referred to a lot of different things, but generally there's like the data and the meta metadata. So there's the actual content, the actual thing, and there's data describing that actual thing. So in our case, we have a whole bunch of sprites, and those sprites are the things that we're gonna get loaded into the game. But then we're gonna have additional information about those sprites that might be useful, for example, for the editor, but it's actually not really useful in the game. And that is a perfect candidate for metadata. We want the editor to remember that this is a collision box and give us some nice tools, but later the game doesn't care if that's collision box. Later the game has its own way of figuring out whether that's collision box in the enemy library and so forth. So, so yeah, metadata. Okay, let us let us let us do some some thinking here. So let's create um, um, something called meta, right? A meta array, and inside the meta array, we're gonna put some inf dump some information, and then we're gonna write that later on into a file. So for example, and this is gonna be like a temporary thing. We're gonna go for. Um, x equals one to hashtag data. We're gonna go through all of the datas and uh, do. And we're gonna say something like mobj meta object equals, we're gonna create it like an empty object, right? Or empty table. And then we're gonna go a meta object um, one, the first entry, maybe we, it's gonna be actually the name of the sprite. So we're gonna go sprite dot dot gonna do all of these things in one go. So we're gonna go sprite dot dot x, right? Um, so that's gonna be the, like the sprite a name. And then the second entry we can put into that object is whether that is actually a, um, a collision, a collision box. 
And we're gonna make it so that um, when it's zero, that means that it's not a collision box, it's just like a regular sprite. And when it's greater than zero, when that number is greater than zero, then that refers to the sprite that this is the collision box of. So when we then select that sprite, we want to draw that other sprite that this is the collision box of, okay? Um, so yeah, we're gonna write these two informations and maybe there's gonna be more information later on. So that's, I'm, that's why I'm creating like this expandable object. We can add more things to that later on. But for now, I think just two entries in there um, is gonna be enough. I'm using, because I could be also do something like mobj.name, right? I could do that. Right, I, I, uh, sprite dot dot x, right? Like I could just do it like this name, and then and then here there's gonna be collision, right? Something like this. I could do that as well. Um, I'm not doing that because I feel like when when it's just like a numbered array, uh, it, it's gonna be just easier to to expand it and and write it into a file. But I'm sure there's like a very nifty way of doing this. Just just let me cook for now. Okay, so now I want to, when I export, I want to write all this information. Uh, let me, oh, by the way, I'm not putting this object into, into the meta array. So let's, let's do that real quick. So after we go through this, we're gonna go meta, uh, square brackets x equals uh, mobj. And then I, when I export, I want to export into two different files. So not just the data, but also a metadata file. Uh, we can maybe already here, we're gonna do like an M file, metadata file, right? And we're gonna call this MSPR meta. <laughs> it's gonna be a whole bunch of text files, I tell you. Maybe we are, it's gonna be a good idea, I'm not sure if we can do this, to put all those text files into a separate directory, and already something I'm thinking about. But nevertheless, um, so m file, right? Or let's call it file m, file meta. Uh, and then we're not gonna include it for now. We're just gonna at first export it and then we're gonna, because right now it doesn't exist. So if we try to include it, it's gonna be a bit of a problem. Okay, so we're just gonna copy all this stuff out. We're just gonna copy this stuff out. We're gonna put it in here, right, like this. And then we're just gonna go through this again. So, um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're gonna go meta, and we're gonna run it through a split 2D, although it's ne not necessarily, but you know, we just have this code. We're just gonna reuse this code. We're not gonna invent things from scratch. So now we're gonna set it meta, because that was the, the name of our, of our array, we're gonna split it to 2D and then we're gonna go through meta and meta, meta, and yeah. And at the end, we're gonna uh, print it to file M, file M, which is here, the meta file, right? And yeah, and that's gonna be it. Let's see if this works. I don't see yeah, it seems like that's that's what we want, right? Let's let's try that. Let's try that. I'm a bit scared. I'm scared. It worked. Let's see if this how the how the meta file looks like. Okay, so this is our meta file. We're gonna open it with um, with uh, zip uh, uh, with with Notepad plus, and yeah, it works. It just totally works. It just wrote this whole stuff: sprite one, sprite two, and so forth. Yeah, 28 sprites. Hey! All right, so now the question is whether we, uh, we're just gonna include this as well. So we're gonna include the meta text file. And now this stuff, that, that is like just our initial data. That is our seed for the meta file. Now we can comment this out and we should. Now the problem is that of course we don't see it. <laughs> We don't see the metadata, right? So uh, let us draw the metadata. So we are going to, uh, when we are 
we drunk the, the names of the files maybe first. Um, that's going to be in UI. And you know, here where we said um, there, spr.i, um, let's, let's call it i dot dot uh, meta i. Uh, and the first entry is the name, right? So something like this. Yeah, there we go. And we have sprite one, sprite two, and so forth and so forth. We have all these weird, weird names for the sprites. Um, let's put a, let's put a space in between there so it's not like bunch up like this. Okay. Uh, the names are not great. <laughs> the names are not great. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it right away. Um, let's let's change names, and that's why it's kind of nice to have like this little thing here. Uh, let's change the names to SPR. Uh, it's a bit redundant, but we're gonna we can then customize names later. We're gonna add some functions to customize the names. Uh, I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna run this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That seems, seems seems more reasonable. And then I'm gonna export it, and then that should have saved this data, and we can comment this out. Comment this out. Okay, so now this data is saved in our data file. And again, we're gonna add some functionality to edit the names or all the different objects later on, but for now I wanna do more stuff. Um, while we're here, let us also let us also edit this thing here. So we're gonna go dot dot. So this is the when you're editing a single sprite at the top, you also see the name of the sprite, so let's do that as well. Um, yeah, like this. Um, I'm not sure if uh, this, I think it's cell spur. Cell spur. Like this. Let's see if that works. Yeah, okay. Good. And again, this is a bit redundant because we called it SPR1, SPR2, and SPR3. Um, we're going to go through them and give them more useful names in a second, but for now it's good. I, I always definitely want to see the number of the sprite because quite often in when we're coding stuff, the number is important. So I always want to see the number, so that's why we're starting with the number. But then the, na the name later on we can customize. Good. Okay, so next up. Um, I want to add a button that uh, that allows us to kind of like do uh, collision detection or collision box mode. Okay, so um, that's going to be something that we do before deleting. Uh, deleting, I, I always want to be the last thing that we're going to do. So how about something like this? We're adding to the menu two things. First, Collision, or let's let's call it call mode. Let's call it call mode. Is that good? I'm not sure if that's good. And then we're gonna um, I'm gonna call it off. Space Jam. Um, just making sure, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, space Jam, this. Um, now we need to put the right, the right um, X and Y coordinates on there. So let me put this in here. That's gonna be where actually, where actually the delete button was previously, but now the delete button has to go further down and maybe even further down. And this goes in here. Not exactly sure where this goes, but yeah, let, let me let me let me see how this looks. Um, some problem here. Yeah, we tried to do a space jam of something that wasn't supposed to be a space jam. Yeah, uh, let's go hashtag. Ah, oh, no, that doesn't work. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's just do nine. Oh, okay, okay. This was the problem. Okay. So yeah, uh, it it now says call off uh, <laughs> because the off is at the right uh, wrong spot. 
Um, let's put it a bit further down. Uh, let's, let's put it at 20. 40. Yeah, so now you can see call mode off. Uh, I don't like how far to the right it goes. I think we're just gonna ab ab abbreviate it with collision, with call. And then this is gonna be four. Yes, and then this can go f further to the left. Yeah, this is good now. Actually, 19. Okay, so when this is off, that means that what we are actually editing now is a sprite. Uh, when it's on or and set to a certain number, that means we are not editing a sprite, that this thing that we're editing here is the collision box to a different sprite, and that sprite number will be written in here. Okay, so let's try to do that. So we're gonna do, first of all, an update function. When we're editing this, uh, I wanna make sure that, see here, if cur y equals 11, like this. Um, that means that we can actually select this off thing, right? You can select this. That's, that's the thing I was looking for. And then we're gonna do something like local, um, of um, call txt equals uh, call txt. I'm trying to figure out what um, what to write into this button. So it's going to be uh, uh, we're going to get the meta stuff. So meta um, cell spur. So we're going to take the metadata of the current sprite, and if the two is set to zero, then this is going to be ternary here. And then we're going to write the, 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 the text off in here. When it's set to, otherwise we're going to set whatever is uh, in that metadata. And then here we can just write in the call text and the space jam call text. Like this is what I'm thinking. Okay. Okay, now that we are printing the UI correctly, now I want to actually do stuff with the UI. So uh, here I don't want to edit val. Instead of what I want to do is edit call, right? Because we're not editing a value, we're editing the collision detection metadata stuff. Yeah, I don't need this. Now let's go in the update function. Here is edit val, right? We're just gonna copy all this stuff because it's kind of similar. Uh, we're gonna cut, set it to edit call. Right, so um, yeah, we're starting to, if that happens, I want to start typing. Um, we put something in the text, what we had here. Just hold this whole stuff. We're gonna put in the text. No, actually, let's, let's put the meta cell spur. Let's just put the meta cell spur in there. Um, just put the meta stuff in there. Um, if that's set to nil, we don't really care about that. Um, this is good. This is good. This is good. Enter, and then call back. Enter. Edit call. That's that's the thing that is supposed to happen after we press enter. Um, now let's look for this. Okay, so here is enter edit. This is what we what happens after we press enter. I want to copy this. It's going to be easier. Edit call. Right. So first of all, uh, we're going to get the menu. Sure. Um, Type val, we're gonna turn it into the number, that's okay. All right, we don't care about this. We do care uh, what happens to type val equals nil or a type val equals zero. So, or a type val equals is smaller than, than, than one. So if, if somebody uh, wrote a bogus number in there, then we do care about, then we're gonna have to think about this a little bit. Um, right, and then we're just gonna change the metadata. 
Um, so we're just going to do uh, meta, right? So here we're usually we're just going to um, write into the metadata whatever we've typed. Um, and if the what we're writing is nil or if it's if it's smaller than one, then what we're going to do is we're going to write in zero because again zero in this this metadata means that it's not a, a collision box and that means that the collision box mode will be turned off. Um, let's do an else here like this. Right, and then we're going to go back to update edit. Like so. Should, should be enough. Something is wrong. Unclosed function. Uh, update edit. Yeah, yeah. Here's, see, because we have an if. So this next should be an else if. Like this. Okay, so let's try this. So we're going to set this to three. Okay, so let's turn this into a sprite maybe. Um, um, so it wasn't able to get the length of our text that we're writing in there. And I think the problem is that we are, have an actual number, not a text in the metadata. So let's go to um, stir, which is just gonna turn it into a string. We're gonna turn that number into a string. Let's write it again. It worked in a sense that it wrote the sprite data in there, uh, the collision data. Let's let's go out and let's go back in. It's still there. The, the collision the collision box data is in here. I'm gonna export it. I'm gonna rerun this. And yes, it's being saved. It's it's being saved in there. So everything in the background works. We just need to actually show it on the screen. We have to actually make the editor react to that. Okay, so then we're gonna go into here where we're drawing the sprite. And then we're gonna do something like if a meta cell spur uh, two is greater than zero, then else this, right? So if it's greater than zero, then what I want to do is I want to actually write, um, I want to actually print this into uh, 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 no, 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 this entire thing. So yeah, if our metadata has been set to something that is greater than zero at this point, then I want to draw that sprite to the screen. And then on top of that, we're going to draw the collision box. Uh, but first, we're going to see if this works. Yeah. So now sprite 28 actually draws sprite three. So we can see superimposed underneath, or like we see our collision box superimposed onto a different sprite. So we can now, you know, position it perfectly the way we want it. Okay, so all that's left to do is we uh, want to actually draw the actual collision box. So I'm gonna actually copy the uh, MSP, um, MSPRC, the collision box drawing function. We're gonna copy that from Kaushmap, copy. We're gonna paste it in here like that uh man somebody sent my wife flowers and it wasn't me anyway so yeah here is the um, draw function that will draw the the collision box right 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 so let us just employ this here so when we Drawing, yeah, we're gonna draw the sprite and then we're gonna draw MSRPC um, cell spur 6363. That's what I'm thinking. Let's try that. So now when we go in here, it totally works. It totally works. So now you can see, for example, if I want to make my box bigger, I can make it bigger, I can change the offset and so forth and so forth. Yeah, so for example, I could do something like this, right? So now we can edit the collision box of our sprites. Perfect. Uh, I'm gonna reset this a little bit. I'm gonna actually um, set it to, to what we had before.
Yeah, I think this is a good position for the sprites. I think I like it. It seems quite centered on the visually centered on the sprite. So let's save this. And let's just go through the motions and create collision boxes for the enemy and for our player bullets, because we had some problems with that. So let's do that real quick. Um, right, so let's go out. I'm gonna export. Oh, by the way, here also we should do that. So let's let's fix that right away. Um, so here we're drawing the sprite. And Like this, right? If meta this is greater than zero, then draw this and this, otherwise this. Ah, I think the problem is it tried to draw something that's outside of bounds. So we're gonna let's, let's go something like if this is smaller and or equals Hashtag meta, then, and let's try that. Ah, and like this, maybe? Yeah, yeah, okay, good. That makes sense. So the problem was that the plus button didn't actually have a CMDY. So it didn't have a sprite number associated with it. So that's why it, 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 didn't, it wasn't able to do anything useful. Um, by the way, something I, I, that just occurred to me, um, we need to, when we delete an entry from our sprite list, we also need to delete the associated meta. And when we create a new entry, we also want to create the associated meta. So let's, let's do that real quick before we start creating more stuff. So here, del spur, that's where we're deleting a sprite. Now we also want to del i meta. So we want to delete the associated meta entry. Uh, and then when we create a sprite, here, new line, right? That's where when we also want to add meta. Um, new sprite. Uh, and then zero. Right, we just want to add a new entry for the meta stuff, okay? So let us save this. Let's run this. Right, so this is the collision box for our ship. Now let us create a collision box for uh, the, the player's, player's shots. Let us like make it for Sprite 9. So we'll see now the news, this new sprite is called new. So we definitely want to add maybe some capabilities of renaming sprites. Uh, but for now, let us edit this. So we're gonna set this to nine. This is our player's shot. And now we need to set the width and height and so forth. Oh, interesting. Like if it's, we set the width and height to zero, it actually, it actually, might, it's actually two times two, funny. Um, okay, so let's set it to two. That's good. Uh, let's set the height to nine, to four. Um, let's set it to 12, 14. Let's set it to 16, whatever. We can get, go all, all out. And then this is gonna be one. Yes, what I'm thinking. Maybe even wider, why not wider? Let's just make it as wide as the sprite is. And this is not the widest sprite. There's sometimes the shot's going to be a little bit wider, um, but for the player shot, I kind of want to, uh, I kind of want to, um, the collision box to be generous. Maybe not quite as generous as like the big sprite, but fairly generous. Okay. So let us export this, and I'm going to write down that 29 is the shot. So now I want to create uh, another collision box. This time I want to create a collision box for. Just a regular UFO. So it is gonna be sprite number 18. Um, so let's go minus eight. Well, let's go seven then. Width and height is gonna be 16, 16. And then it's gonna be seven, like this.
Is that good? What if it's set to zero? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's gonna be fairly big. Maybe, maybe a bit smaller. Maybe, maybe just this fifteen. Maybe we're not gonna take the oops. Uh, not gonna take the outlines with us. Oh, actually, no. Uh, actually, fourteen. Um, because the problem is we have to kind of like balance. Obviously, it should be easy to hit the enemies. Obviously, it should be just easy to hit the enemies. But the enemies also collide with the player ship, and that kind of we want to be a bit more generous. So let's let's try this and see how that feels. All right, we're going to export this and we're going to write down the number. So that's going to be the enemy is going to be a collision number thirty. Okay. So let's go back to load cow schmup. And let's put the data in here. So for example, for the enemies, we want the collision to be 30. And for the shots, we want the collision to be 29. Like this. Let's run this. Right. So obviously we don't see well we the, the enemy is now really big now so let's let's create a small enemy instead. There's a small enemy. Ooh. Ah I know I think what the problem is. Uh, I think we're spawning a shot, the enemy shot, and it didn't like that for some reason. Where is it? Um do enemies yeah, where the enemies shoot, right? We're spawning a bullet here and it does, this doesn't have a collision box associated with it. So let's uh, let's just make the collision box as big as the actual sprite. Okay, we didn't see the color the sprite because we spawned the enemy too high, uh, but that's okay. Um, let us um, just d d disentangle the, the the brains so the brains are always really stupid, so we can see the enemy here. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, the collision box is definitely perfectly aligned with the enemy, and it feels good to hit the enemy there like this. Question is whether let's turn off the collision box so, so we see just visually if it looks okay to hit the enemy like this. So we're gonna remove the debug. Do do I feel like yeah, I feel like now yeah, I feel like the shots that are missing the enemy are like yeah, I'm I miss the enemy here, right? It doesn't feel like the shots that hit the enemy here. Okay, next step I actually want to um uh, link our enemy system to this new collision box system. So the enemies themselves remember uh, when they have a collision, like what kind of collision they're supposed to have. So we're we gonna, um, yeah, we're gonna save this. And we're gonna go load and edit. Was it an edit? No. What was it? And edit. Yeah. Load and edit. Let me run this. Right. So we have animation um, ASP. Um, um, the animation speed, the brain, the HP, and also now we want to add the collision box. All right, so here in the refresh table function, this is where we have the captions for the different columns. And here I want to also add call as a caption. Uh, the problem is that our player data actually doesn't have more entries, so we have to loop through the player data and uh, to the enemy data and add that fourth entry. Or actually, do we have to? Does it? I don't, we don't have to, we can create it manually. We don't have to, okay. So uh, the collision box for this enemy is gonna be a, 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 a 30, right, 30. And the collision box for this enemy, we're just also gonna default to 30. Maybe we're gonna add another collision box for the big enemy. We're gonna see how that works out, okay. And then we're gonna export this and that's it. That's our, our stuff hooked up already. Now we, we need to hook it up back in our actual game. Load cow schmup. So here in, uh, in the gameplay where we're spawning an enemy, we kind of unhooked the brains because we didn't want that. Uh, but now here we can take the collision box right from our enemy database. That's going to be entry number five. Five. All right, let's see if this works. Yeah, that's the same collision box that we had before. Uh, now, But now that, that number is coming from the database. Good, good, good. Let us look through our to-do list. So. We expanded the editor. We did some collision testing. Uh, we added the collisions to our enemy library. Um, and yeah, now we can delete that FX expansion. So here in the tools, 
um, this stuff, we don't need that anymore because now we have custom collision boxes that are exactly you know the, the size of the dough that we prepared. We can delete uh, even the old stuff in here. And then here as well, we can delete these things. All of this is no longer necessary. Let's run this to make sure that it still works. Still works, still looks good, perfect. Now I'm actually going to add one last thing and that is gonna be player exploding. <laughs> we haven't done that and I think it's a good moment to do that, but we're gonna do that in the doggy zone. That's right, in the doggy zone. Mm -mm -mm. Yes, this is true, the doggy zone. So there's still some things that we that are really left on the table. First player exploding, that's maybe something that we're gonna do in the next episode, but also, I want to also be able to edit a sp sprite name meta. Um, we introduced this idea that the sprite, uh, the sprites have names, and this, these names are saved in our metadata. Now I want to be able to actually edit that metadata in our editor. Like a little tweak to our editor, and that's going to be a huge big deal. But I think it's worth it to to edit this as well. So yeah, these two things, that the player explodes when it hits by a bullet or if it collides with an enemy, and being able to edit the, the meta name stuff, that's going to be the doggy zone. You can pick one of those two or you can do both if you want to. This is going to be the doggy zone. That's right. And yeah, we're going to move on to this part of the episode where I say a big thank you, huge shout out to all the beautiful people who are supporting this show on coffee.com slash lazy devs. They are making the show possible. And if you are not supporting the show, you can make the show possible as well. And yeah, as a little perk, you get to see new episodes earlier. That's a huge deal if you're following this tutorial on YouTube. Now, I also wanted to read out a comment. This comment is by the Zetakai and they commented on episode 25. Um, for the basic schmuck tutorial, I went with a circle-based detection system so that I would only have to track X, Y, and radius of the circle rather than define the top, bottom, left, right parameters. Also, most of the objects in the game are roughly circular rather than square, so the circle made more sense. Listed below in the spoilers um, is my collision detection code with comments for reference. Yeah, uh, so you can go to episode 25 and see how the Zetekai did this. This is actually a good idea to make this um, uh, collision detection based on circles. Basically, you calculate the distance between two objects, and if the distance between two objects is close enough, then that means they're collided. That's a way simpler way of doing the collision detection. Um, and yeah, especially for circular objects, that makes a lot more sense, but also like objects that are just roughly square, that kind of also basically works. Um, the reason why I have not chosen this system here is that we might want to have elongated objects like long boys, you know, and stuff like that. And for that kind of stuff, uh, it's better to have like the boxes based collision uh, system. Ideally, in the best possible world, you would have just two types of collision boxes, square ones and circle ones. Um, but then you have to like deal with two types of collision systems and then collision a box with a circle is kind of like complicated. Uh, so I, you, I'd have to pick one and I pick one, the one that is a bit more flexible. But uh, depending on how you design uh, the enemies and so forth, you could also get away with a collision, with a circular collision uh, system. And that would make uh, you know, the, the math a lot more simpler, a lot more simpler. And also you would have to store less data in the database. And, and, and for that, I would actually maybe, uh, yeah, I'm not sure how the Zetekai would do that. Uh, you, you would probably create like a separate collision box system for that, right? Yes, yes, yes. So um, yeah, we, the collision system is basically wrapped up. There's some leftovers that we need to take care of. And then we can move on to the scheduled spawn system. We're gonna talk about that in the next episode. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.